Hi, welcome back to Bolster Delights. I'm Ricky Royal, and this is Genotype from Genius Games. Genius Games is a company that I've been really getting into. They promote scientific games and scientific knowledge. Every game they publish tends to come with not just a rule book, but a, a science behind book as well. This time, it's a genetics game. So they teach you about the science behind each of their games. Recently I showed you on the origin of species. This was one of my highlights of 2020. Beautiful game. I also recently showed you a little card game, Ecosystem. And a little while ago, the cell building game, Cytosis. And another one I've recently got from them is Subatomic, an atom building game. These are great science games. They take familiar game mechanisms, so this one was deck, primarily deck building as it goes. Genotype is worker placement, but it also has some dice rolling and mitigation of these dice. As you can imagine with a genetics game, it covers trait inheritance from parents and a little bit of that is random, Okay, which traits are inherited. And this is where the dice are used. But there's a lot of dice mitigation. You roll the dice and then decide how to use them. So there's not really luck. Sorry, but there's dice, but not luck. It's more Euro than that. Very deterministic. Beautiful artwork. It looks great set up on the table. Now, I'll confess. I tried to get my daughter to play. I said, come and play this game. What's it about, Dad? It's about growing peas. She's like, really, Dad? <laughs> I ran off to watch Disney+. Plus. But fortunately, there is a solo mode in here. And I'm going to show that to you today. The game is set in the mid-19th century and based around the research of one Gregor Mendel, who lectured about experiments in plant hybridisation and he used the pea plant as his subject in the gardens of St Thomas's Abbey. And this is where we learn about Mendelian Genetics, not Mandalorian. <laughs> Although if it was Mandalorian, maybe maybe my daughter would be interested. But no, there's there's no Star Wars here. Although maybe if I'd said the peas were embryonic Yoda, she might have been interested. No, this is much more interesting. And for, for me, this is this is fascinating, and it looks beautiful. All right, let's finish setting up, and we'll talk about the premise of the game. There's two sides to the board. Over this side is what we call these Punnett squares. How likely is it that you'll get a certain trait crossing two parents with known genotypes? So we've got four different traits here. We've got the seed shape, flower colour, the pod colour and the plant height. Remember we're growing pea plants. Over this side of the board, this represents the abbey where we've set up our greenhouse. We've got a tool shed, we've got a nursery, okay, we can develop new plants. We've got research upgrades a way to gain coins, coins we spend to buy new research upgrades. Okay, and then we've got a bunch of cards. We're going to be playing solo, so we're going to set up as per a two-player game, where you can play up to five. So in a nursery on a two-player game, or solo, we have three pea plant cards, and three tools in the tool shed. We're going to be able to place actions, like workers in a working placement. It's called the working phase, and these are action markers, which are these little wooden trowels. We're going to place them in these different spots to take these different actions. We also have a bunch of research assistants. These are going to be clerical-looking people. Here we go. Right, because we are in the abbey, after all. So there's going to be three research assistants available to us each round, and we're going to play a game of five rounds. We have a final harvest where we harvest the plants that are remaining in our garden plots. This is our garden plot. And we're trying to complete these pea cards. These are pea plants. In the top left is a number of victory points. Now Mendel was focused on four different traits. The seed shape, represented by the letter R. Now in this case... You get two letters, right? So there's a dominant gene, which is the capital, and then the recessive gene, which is the lower case. Right? In the case of the RP plants, stay with me, in the case of RP plants, capital R is the dominant trait, which is round. And lowercase r 
is recessive. Now there's a little illustration on these cards. So you can see with two R, two capital R's, a capital R or a little r, r being dominant, the seed shape is still round. Okay, Any sign of a capital R and the seed shape is round. If you have two little r's, then it would be wrinkled. Okay, like this. Now recessive ones are harder to come by, or even two dominants, tend to be worth more points. Plants that exhibit lots of different traits will be worth more points. So we've got seed shape, letter R, we've got the flower colour, purple is dominance, capital F and white is recessive. Then we've got pod colour, these ones aren't exhibiting pods or flowers, right? So they don't have those traits, they don't have F and G is the pod colour, capital G is green, little g is yellow. And then we've got the plant height. Capital T is tall, lowercase t is short. So you can see this one has got the, the short gene twice, or genotype, so this one is going to be short. Any sign of capital T, the dominant, then it's going to be a tall plant. Right? So that's what we're trying to aim towards. How do we fulfill these plants? We've got to use our dice in the plant breeding section. So let's say we're using the green dice, we roll these dice, they determine the traits inherited by all the plants that we're breeding. Oh, this has happened to be like this. Now, more likely is going to be the dominant genes. Okay, well, we'll look at this in more detail, but what we're going to be doing is collecting these dice that represent the different genotypes, drafting these dice to fill these, splot, these spots okay, on our plants. When we fully, fully researched and gardened one of these plants, so actually we're going to grab these cards, place them in our garden plots, draft dice to fill these genotypes, and scores just the points. Now our ability to draft more dice, our ability to plant more plants in our garden, is all determined by all these supporting tools and actions elsewhere on the board. So we can influence the results of these dice using these Punnett squares. Dice get rolled. We can determine which plants we want to grow, the tools, like we've got a graft knife here, a pocket watch, garden line. Tools of gardening help us plant up our garden plots with more plants, score us more points. All right, let's get into it and we'll see how this thing works. We start with three action markers. We can research more, okay, the ability to do more work. We've also got these research markers. Okay, so these are action markers, these are research markers. We can set ourselves research goals. And if we grow plants that exhibit traits that match our research goals, that's extra points at the end of the game. Right? Again, we'll come to that when we get to it. We also start with a coin, just one coin. Coins we can use to buy research upgrades and actually research goals. And um, we start with three pea plant cards drawn randomly. We start with three. We've got to choose one to place in our garden, one to keep in our hand, and one to discard. Right? So it's kind of a, a way to start us off. Now I'm looking for commonalities. This one might be a good one to start us off with because it's more easily achieved, I guess. I think I'm going to take these discard what we don't want. Place one to plant in our garden. Let's plant this one. This one goes in our hand. Okay, so we're looking for tall, white, green potted plants. We also start with the first player marker. Okay, we're always first player when we're playing solo. We also do the same for our simulated opponent called Brother Johan, administrator at the monastery. Okay, the Abbey's Monastery. We've got some reference cards that tell us how to do stuff. One for each phase of the game. It's got some cardinal rules, rules we must always obey, and there's some little setup as well. So the setup says Johan gets three action tokens, three research tokens, two pea plant cards, and one coin. Right, and a set of Automa cards. These are like nine cards that derive. Johan's behaviour. We can choose a difficulty, easy, standard or hard. Why don't we go for standard for now? Okay. 
start with easy. <laughs> That's my advice. So we draw two P cards. Now these go in Johan's garden. Johan has a maximum of four P plants at any one time. That's it, we're ready to go. Let's get playing. We start the game in the working phase. In the working phase, we get to place our three action tokens, our three trowels. Where do we want to begin? Well, I know I need to get recessive Fs, flower colours, a heterozygous, this is, means they've got one of each, on pod colour. The homozygous ones are harder to get, so this is quite a difficult plant for me to research. So can we influence that in some way? We can. One of the actions we can take is to kind of concentrate our breeding patterns in some way. What traits are we looking for in the parents? One of these actions is called setting parent genes. Okay? And there's trowel spots on the board for these. Now it's worker placement, so if I go place my trowel here, nobody else can. Right? Only one person can do this each round, I mean, just five rounds. Now remember on my plant, for example, I'm looking for a double T. Okay, T, T. Now these Punnett squares say, what's the likelihood of getting a TT? Well, we look at the dice, okay? Now on the die, you've got the numbers one, two, three, four, and then you've got these de novo mutations on two sides as well. Okay, so let's assume it's, let's ignore those for the moment. One in four chance of getting TT. Okay, it's actually one in six, but We'll ignore the de novo mutations for the moment, we'll come to that in a little bit, but within this square, we either, if a 1 would be a TT, a 2 would be T, lower T, yeah, 3, lower T, capital T, and a 4, 2 lowercase t's. So you can see this is the most common, well, it's just twice as likely as this or this. So can we influence the results? We can. We can take an action here, and we can place one of these markers on. And we can place it whichever side we want. Now we're looking for capital T's, right, the dominant trait. So we could place it here. Now all of a sudden we've doubled our chances. These two are going to give us the heterozygous, capital lower, right, dominant recessive. And these two, one and three now, are going to give us the homozygous two capital T's. Now one of the benefits of taking the setting parent genes is you also gain a little bit of research funding for doing that. So I'm going to take this coin. Coins are useful for research upgrades in the next phase of the game. We'll come to that. Right, there we go. Time for Johan to take his automated turn. So we've got, remember these are the cardinal rules. We're in the first worker phase. So each turn it says Johan uses a pair of automa cards. That's these. The first one we draw, we draw two. The first determines his action, and then the second one's called a support card, which may or may not be used. The first card determines what action it's going to take. We ignore this stuff, we ignore this stuff, we're just looking at this part here. It says he's putting his action on the university spot. Now, as it goes, the university action doesn't need a support card, so we'll ignore that one. And Johan starts the game with one coin, remember? So he's going to take his trowel. He'll only take this action if he can afford to do it. I'll take his action token. We'll look at the university action, which is up here. The first person who places an action here is going to have to spend one coin to take this action. If I wanted to take this action now, it would cost me two coins. So one coin spent, so he can afford to take the action. And this leaf here says you can validate one trait. Validating basically says, oh, we've achieved it. We've accomplished one of these, one of these traits. We've fulfilled it. Now, remember I said that typically you do that with the dice, right? The dice that get placed in these spots. But the university means we've done a bit of research. We've shortcutted this process, or Johan has, and has validated one of the traits on his P card. Johan always places his P cards in his garden in a nice, neat little row, and he wants to validate them from the bottom up. He's got a nice tidy garden. There we go. So we take a leaf and we validate from the bottom up this homozygous recessive short gene. He's actually managed to get a bonus on a difficult one or a more difficult one to acquire. All right, go 
wonderful stuff. Now, if Johan ever completes any of these plants, he'll harvest it, bank it, take his eight points. That's his turn done, nice and quick. So it's all real simple, and that's one of the good things about this mode, this solar mode. It's all really simple. Now, I've got two coins. I can spot an assistant over there that I'd like. Now, at the moment, if I look at the research upgrades, we're not in the research, we can't buy stuff at this moment, but I'm thinking ahead to the next phase when we can start researching stuff. There's an abacus here that kind of works like a market. Every time you buy something, it pushes the price up, and then all prices shift down at the end of the round. Um, at the moment, assistance cost two coins, which is what I've got. I'm also thinking about setting a research goal, you see. Hmm. Research goals can be good. So, for example, let's say I decided I want to focus on green potted plants. Okay. I can set a research goal of my two coins. I can take for my action, place one of my trowels here. Again, it's going to cost me two gold. That's what I've got, two coins, right? The next person who takes this would have to cost three. But then I can take one of my three research goals and place it in one of these spots. And it will give me some focus for the game. So if I place it here, and only one person can place this, there's only a spot for one token. Someone else could go for yellow, but I'm going for green. At the end of the game, every plant that exhibits green pods will score me a bonus two points. The other thing that's quite nice is this graph knife. So I'm tempted by that. Yeah, maybe that's a better a better thing to do. Maybe we'll choose these once we've got a few plants and we'll see. You know, we don't want to commit too early perhaps. So maybe I'll go here instead to the tool shed. If I place an action in the tool shed, I can just grab one of these cards. You can also go to the nursery and grab some pea plants, but they just go to your hand. You have to take a gardening action to then plant them. Right, we'll come to that in a bit. Right, so tool shed, different tools do different things. These ones say when taking the first shift or second shift action, I'll come on to those in a minute, take an extra two coins, so that's nice. But the one I'm interested in is this graft knife. This one says when I take one of these dice, yeah, one of these offspring dice, I can take an additional one. Okay, So I'm going to take this. What are those first and second shift actions? When it comes to taking dice, which is going to be the next phase of the game, it starts with the first player and you alternate taking turns, taking a die, drafting a die. If you've taken first shift, what that means is actually you get to go first, you get first dibs. If you place, and only one person can do one first shift on each row, okay, on each trait, type of trait. Um, so there's a second shift one as well. So you can place an action here, which means after everyone's first shift has gone, second shift goes. Okay, and obviously these things make those things more valuable to you. But anyway, I'm taking the graph nice, and I'll tell you what that does when we get there. Back to Johan. So remember, he draws two cards. The first says what action we take. Okay, so the action we take is he's also going to do a set parent gene. Which gene does he want to set? We look at the support card. Now there's one card that has the mutation symbol. If we see the mutation symbol, we actually look at this, the, the, the primary action, so that would be a T. Normally a support card would have a little letter in the bottom. So the support card says, place a parent gene on the T. Okay. This one says, place a parent gene on the capital T. Okay. If he was setting the lowercase T, he'd just place one of these on. If he was placing the uppercase T, place one of those on, right? But if there's already one there, he takes it off. But as it goes, he can't take an action here because to take an action here he needs to place one of his trowels. So that becomes an invalid option. So he's going to draw again. So he draws an F instead. If all of these were invalid options, then he would just draw a new action. As it goes, he's going to place a parent gene on F. Okay. Action, support, F. F is flower colour. He's placing 
apparent gene on the left side. Okay, here's an action saying place apparent gene on the top side. Um, there's a capital F, so that's going in here, and he's taking a coin. All right, back to us. We've got one action left, and I'm not very happy because he's blown my chances of getting this two little Fs. So I'm tempted, well, I could use the university, and that would get me the little F. That's a possibility, but then I lose my coin that I want to use for research. The other option is I've got an empty garden plot, obviously. I can grab some more pea plants, because then I can plant. But I think what I'll do is just keep it simple. I'm just going to go to the treasury for now, grab some more coins. It, one, it stops him doing it, and opens up some of my other turns later in the game. Money is really important for these upgrades. Okay, Johan, let's see what you've got. Treasury. And there's the support card. You can't take the treasury action. Here it is. There's only one spot. This extra spot is only used in the four plus game. Okay, so we've stopped from taking coins. Perfect. And if you're astute, remember you're drawing two cards every t autonomous turn, right? And maybe more. Okay, if you need to replace one. Um, but if, you, if you're astute, you'll know what's gone by already. So, can't take this, so we have to redraw this one. We'll leave this one where it is. So if you can't take an action, just replace that one card. Nursery. Okay, so that he can do. So you're going to take the nursery action, which is just here. There's two trowels here, there's spots for, for two. And he's going to grab one of these pea plants. Which pea plant does he take is determined by his support card. In the bottom right here are three pips. One of them is going to be shaded dark, so the far left one here. Okay, That means he's taking this card. So that pea plant is retrieved and placed in his garden. So he's got two pea plants at the moment, now he's got three. All right. Takes one and he discards one. He discards the one to the right. So that's going in the discard pile. And that's it. We're done with the workroom phase. We play, we've both placed our three actions. And we need to shuffle back up his Automa deck. Now, as it goes, Johan has a special set of actions. It's called the Automa phase. And we work from the top down. If they place any workers in the first shift, they shuffle to the second shift. He didn't do that. Next, Johan will validate a trait for every assistant. He doesn't have any assistants. Then, gains a P card, and he also gains P cards for any extra plots, which he's gained. He hasn't gained any. So as it goes, he's going to gain one P card. Okay. He's allowed a maximum of four, so he's got his maximum four now. Okay. This is the new one he's taken. And then in standard or hard difficulties, he gains three coins. Okay. Finally, we reshuffle the Automa deck. Right, so we move next to the plant breeding phase. This is where we roll these dice. So we start by rolling all these dice. Okay. And as we roll them, we're going to place them in one of these three spots, whether it's homozygous or heterozygous, dominant or recessive. I play multiplayer, you'll do this together, so it makes it a little bit quicker. But anything that rolls these mutations, just keep those aside. But assuming these aren't modified, then ones go here, fours go here, twos and threes go in the middle. So it's actually pretty quick because you just get used to it. Okay, so one is capital R, capital R, dominant R, dominant R. Okay, homozygous. Four is little r, little r. Okay. Twos and threes are a mixture. Okay, r, 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 r like this. All right, makes sense. These ones we re-roll. Okay, that one is a two. That one we've rolled a de novo mutation again. So we're gonna keep that in the box. Okay, you only re-roll them once. And de novos end up being like little wild cards that might be useful to us. All right, let's do the same for flower color. Wow. 
Now remember, this 3 and this 4 are now in the wrong space because there was a parent gene modification here. So 3s is now dominant homozygous. 4s are now heterozygous. All right, let's do green pod color. There's no parent gene modifications here. Uh, one, four, three, re-roll, four, okay, and then yellow. Now once more, ones and threes now go in this box. Twos and fours go in this box, that one gets re-rolled. That's a two. That's this box, yep, CT. Okay, we've rolled on our dice, now we'll start the draft. So if anyone had gone in first shift, they would get first pick now. Nobody did. Now we look in second shift. If anyone put second shift in, they would now get a pick. No one did. Then third and finally, we start alternating between whoever's first player and who's not. I'm first player. This is what I'm after. Okay. This one's not available. Capital C. These one are available and these ones are available so this is what I'm after yeah so I'm gonna take this now what's interesting here is there's a little bit of competition all right there's only two dice here and there's only two dice here is there a chance that Johan might take one of them so if I take this might he take this or if I take this might he take that so yeah we gotta be careful so I'm gonna take one of these and what's important is you've got this offspring research all right, we're just going to keep taking dice until we fill all of these slots. Now you can, during your working phase, give yourself a temporary dice slot. Okay, so you can increase this, and you can also do it for a research. You can buy new dice slots. But I'm taking this, which was a homozygous dominant plant height, tall. I take a green leaf, and I'm going to cover that. Up. Right there's the two T's. That's it. As it goes, I don't really want to use the graft knife just yet, so I'm going to keep this in my hand. Tools are one-time use. If I'd chosen to use this now, try and grab a die, an extra die, before Johan did, I'd use it, place the extra die here, and then discard. So I'm going to keep this in my hand. Now Johan is going to do his. So we went, now it goes to Johan. We draw the top card, and we place it next to the topmost card in his garden. He's working from the top down this time. All right, now we're going to line up these arrows. If there's a double arrow pointing at a trait, it takes two dice from that slot. A single arrow, one die. Okay, so he's looking for the uppercase, lowercase, F, one die. There is one. <laughs> that's it, just one. If there weren't any, he would have to skip it. All right, so that just goes off to the side. Grabs a leaf, covers that trait. So he's got a purple sprouting pea. Back to me. I'm going to grab one of these dice, fill up a spot, grab a leaf. This was capital G, lowercase g. Which allows me to fill this one, which is the green pods. All I need now is the white flower. Your hand's going to draw. This time he's taking one on two little T's that isn't. Incidentally, each of these cards shows one of the de novo mutation dice. If one of those existed, he would use it. So in this case, it would be a red one. Okay, so uh, there's no short trait die there's nothing here he would look because there's a red novo here there was a yellow one on that one there's no red de novo there's only a blue one okay so again he can't do anything this time if there was a blue de novo he would take this and then use it as a wild to fill one of his plant or validate one of his plant traits okay it's back to us we do still have an empty slot and i've got my graft still if I want it but I don't. Now we can do something clever here and this is where we've beat 
Johan to it, we can take this de novo die and use it wild. Okay. If we wanted to turn it into one of these, we can only it's blue, but we can only turn it into one of these seed shapes, right? We don't have any spots in here to fill with seed shapes because we don't need it. But the icon here says a de novo die can be used for two reasons. We can validate a trait or we can just take a coin. So let's do that. We have to have an empty spot here, an extra dice slot, grab a coin. Okay. Back to Johan. This is his third and final. Okay, he only gets three. He would get additional ones if he had extra dice slots. Right, he hasn't bought any of those upgrades yet. Oh, we haven't got that far. Okay, oh, and that was close. There's the blue or the R de novo mutation die. He grabbed it before he did. So this time he's taking two dice from the heterozygous flower colour. And this one points at nothing. And as it goes, there's no dice in his spot. No de novos. Right, so he's done. That's his third and final. And that's it. That's the plant breeding phase completed. Next is the upgrade. Now, upgrade's done in reverse player order. So this time Johan goes first. And he's got quite a lot of money to spend. So again, we're going to draw an Automa card. And this time, we're looking at the arrows once more. And we're looking for the double arrow. It's either in spot one, two, three, or four, the bottom spot. Okay, spots one, two, three, four corresponds here. Okay, so your hand is going to use the double arrow to hire an assistant. It's going to cost him. This is where these things at the start of the game are on these darker abacus spots. It's going to cost him two coins to do this, and then that pushes the price up. Which assistant does he hire? We grab a support card. Okay. And we look at the dots. So it's the middle one. Right. We didn't want him doing that. Buying assistance. Yeah. Anyway, there he goes. He pays his two coin. Grabs the middle assistant. Doesn't look at the effects. Okay. Assistants are just placed face down. And it just gives him a little boost up during the next Automa phase. Remember, it said in the Automa phase, where is it? Here, yeah, yeah. Validate one trait for every assistant you have. You've now got one assistant, okay? Okay, so he's done his first upgrade. Now, in easy, that would be it. That's all he would do, but we're playing uh, regular, right? So in easy mode, he just grabs one upgrade in hard mode, he'll grab two upgrades. But we get a chance first, and I want to buy an assistant as well. I want to do this before he does. And the price has gone up, unfortunately. It's going to cost three. And the one I want to buy is Sister Elizabeth. The price has now gone up to four. Remember, every time you take that action, it goes up. So I get Sister Elizabeth. But it's going to cost me three coins. These aren't refreshed, by the way. Not yet, anyway. Right, Johan does his second upgrade. And it's going to be, when we're looking for the double arrow, the top one, a new plot. Okay, top one, new plot. And that's a shame, because I wanted that. So he's going to pay two, push the price up, grab an extra plot. That goes in his area as well, so he's got an extra plot. Pays the two coins. Now, in a normal game, an extra plot means we can plant more plants, but for Johan, it doesn't mean that. He's only ever got, at most, four pea plants. During the Ultoma phase, when we did this, so for every assistant he validates, then he gets an extra pea card, plus one for each plot card. But if his garden's full, he's already got four, four what he does instead is validates a trait. Right? So with a full garden, extra plots means he's validating. So more assistants, more plots, he's validating more quickly. That's bad news. But that's his final upgrade and he's out of money. Just having more money was a pain. Right, we've got two coins left. The only thing that costs two coin is a dice slot. So actually I'm going to do that. I'm going to pay two coins and grab an extra dice slot. 
So that's coming down here. So next time, I'll put it here actually. Next time I can use four dice, not just three. All right, end of the round, clear away those dice. The round marker goes up, we're now on round two. Normally the first player would, marker would pass, but we're always first player playing solo. Markets will all shift one spot to the left now. If they were already as far left as they could go, they would stay there. These are discarded. And we refill. This guy's discarded and we refill. Three more. Action tokens all go back. We refill these one coin spots next to the hullets. These parent G modifiers, they stay. So remember, we could place an action to take one off, place an action to add another one on. And that's it. We're now heading into round two. So join me next time as we continue playing Genotype.